2022 was kind of a crap year. As the year comes to a close, we often reflect on what's happened in our lives in the past 300 or so days. Looking back at time with family and friends, maybe trips, celebrations, achievements, you know, all the fun stuff. But in the end, we really just classify all our experiences into one of two categories, the best and the worst. And in honor of a pretty crap year for the world, we're gonna start off 2022 in review with the top 10 worst EDM albums of 2022. Now, before we go any further, I want to make a couple of disclaimers. Number one, EDM or electronic dance music is a fairly broad term. It's such an umbrella genre that keeps growing and growing with new sounds and styles. So I'm going to categorize an album as EDM if there is very prominent influences from electronic dance music or its subgenres throughout a majority of the project. Anything from electropop to reggaeton to dubstep to house to downtempo. Disclaimer number two, these are just my opinions. While I do believe music to be a mixture of both subjectivity and objectivity, these albums ultimately didn't sit well for me. If you loved them, that's great. I'm not gonna hunt you down for enjoying it and I would hope that you don't do the same back at me. And finally, disclaimer number three, you may severely dislike that I'm even doing this type of video, that there's no need to highlight the worst music of the year, and by doing so, I'm feeding some hate culture or something like that. If you don't like these kind of videos, don't watch it. Go away. You don't have to watch something you don't wanna watch. And to be honest, I believe this channel to be a fairly positive in both the content I cover and my feelings towards it. So for just one day of the year, let me let loose just a little bit, please, just once. So with that fully out of the way, let's hop into what I believe to be the top 10 worst EDM albums of 2022. Honestly, I think Dubstep had a pretty rough year. There were some highlights for sure and some solid stuff out there, but as a holistic genre, I think that this was probably the first year since Skrillex put Dubstep on the main stage that I would say the genre has declined in quality. Don't get me wrong, I think there are some great new subgenres that are great for the ecosystem as a whole. Individually, color bass has been popping off this year. When it comes to the classical dubstep or brostep sounding tracks, it's been pretty rough. So what happens when you slap a dying genre onto an exhaustive track list and then provide little to no variation from song to song? Well, you end up as number 10 on my list. Excision has been a mainstay in the realm of hard-hitting dubstep, leaning heavily into a mechanized sound design with festival-ready drops. Now, I've never really been the biggest or most devoted Excision fan, but I've always given his albums a shot, and I've typically had a couple tracks from each project that I've pretty much enjoyed. So while I thought Encounter with Dion Timmer was a solid cut from this project, the rest of the LP was a drowning sea of noise I felt little to no attachment to. There was a point in my first listen through where I genuinely thought I had the same song playing again and again on repeat. I, I didn't understand. Almost half the tracks from this album follow the same melody and note structure, making for a very repetitive listen that really drags on into the latter half of the LP. Individually, most of the tracks are just like, okay, I guess. Nothing really much to differentiate themselves from other commanding dubstep tracks out there. Yet all encompassing, the album really dulls itself out. Albums can be a delicate process for many producers, and particularly within the EDM realm, artists aren't so much in a hurry to put out a fully fleshed out project, resorting to a slew of singles and EPs for the most part. So when an artist finally drops a debut album, it's something to be celebrated. As you know, they put a lot of time and energy into the project. Look at Swedish House Mafia, for example, who finally came out with their debut and comeback album, Paradise Again. It was a big event in the world of EDM and a pivotal moment for Swedish House Mafia's career. So you would hope that any bigger named artist would make an occasion of their debut album. Or not. Just as EDM, or more specifically dubstep, has grown, so has Slander. They have been on the forefront of some of the most exciting and energetic tunes to date. Working in a variety of genres and styles, Slander has been a mixed bag of goodies for the past seven years or so. Going as far as even forging their own label, Heaven Sent. I really am a big fan of Slander and all they've done for the EDM scene, apart from this album. Out of seemingly nowhere, this album popped into existence. Going back to the Swedish House Mafia metaphor, if that album was welcomed as you would welcome a king or queen to your hometown, Thrive's release would be like watching a tourist walk by your front door, 
No fanfare, no ceremony, just flowing like a leaf in the wind, something very forgettable. Okay, you might be asking, Bowtie, the album release doesn't really have anything to do with how good or bad the album is. And I would say, I totally agree with you. It definitely helps in some circumstances, but the release cycle of a project doesn't determine my feelings towards it. But my feelings towards this are still suboptimal. There are definitely a couple great tracks amongst this LP, but as a collective, it just feels really dry and void. For a label that tries to produce, and I quote, emotional music sent from above, they really took none of that to heart here. I've said for a long time now that melodic dubstep has way overstayed its welcome, and slander really isn't helping the genre out. The drops are uninteresting, the structure is monotonous, and overall the album feels like a derivative of all other melodic dubstep albums before it. I find it hard to believe that this was the debut album Slander really wanted to release. If this was a music theory, I would be making a 30 minute expose on why this album was purposefully shadow released in hopes that their fans would forget all about the thing. And honestly, I hope to forget all about it very soon. You know what? Come to think about it, I think there was another album released this year that was from a long-standing artist that also didn't quite hit the mark. Who could that be? With even more skin in the game than Slander, Nightmare has been one of those artists that we were just waiting and waiting for a debut album. Nightmare has gone through numerous styles, genres, and even popularity changes that it's almost hard to believe that it took him almost 10 years to put out a full-length project. But while Nightmare was once a trendsetter in the industry, Dreamverse feels like a counterfeit album. There are almost no original track ideas throughout this list, and instead relying on an odd mixture of commercial electropop and niche melodic dubstep. The sounds are thrown together so haphazardly that the commercial listener isn't going to like the album for its dubstep, and the EDM stands aren't going to like it for its flat electropop. He really made a lose-lose album for all listeners. Okay, okay, I know what some of you are gonna type right now. Votai, you just hate melodic dubstep. That's it. That's not it at all. I get melodic dubstep, I really do. I grew up in the prime time of melodic dubstep following the rise of the likes of Elenium, Seven Lions, and Nero. I really love melodic dubstep, but I've heard it all now. There is only so much you can do with an already niche subgenre that hasn't been done before. I loved melodic dubstep when it was fresh, and boy, it's, it's, it's just stale now. With how broad and mainstream EDM has become nowadays, it's not abnormal to see pop artists cross over into a more electronic-centric sound. Especially with how digitized music production has become in our current culture, practically anything can be a synth now. You've got popular albums from the likes of Dua Lipa, Lady Gaga, and The Weeknd, and so many more that could be labeled as EDM. But there are two huge names in the pop world that took on a very clear-cut EDM-stylized album this year both with opposing success. On the better half was Beyonce with Renaissance, a truly great house record with killer performances and an LP that honored the roots in which it was performing under. And on the worst half, there's... First things first, if you don't believe this falls under the umbrella term of EDM, you need to forget the name it's under and just listen. And I mean truly listen to this record. Drake's Honestly Nevermind is a house album through and through, no question about it. And boy, does it ever give house music a bad name. I'm honestly glad Beyonce dropped Renaissance just a month after this mess of an album to show the world that house music can actually be really, really good. Drake tried to play around with a swaying club kind of soundscape for this LP, and might I say that this album will rock you. To sleep, that is. This has got to be some of the most boring, lackadaisical, dull records to hit the airwaves this year, and on top of the drag of a production, the lyrical content is by far some of Drake's worst. Stay with me for a moment here. Let's say you're building a house. You've put so much time into it and you're almost done. Then you bring your friend over to show them your progress only for them to say, you know what? This looks easy. I bet I can do this even better than you. And then goes and absolutely destroys the place setting you back months and months of progress. And as they leave, they say, see, so easy. You're welcome. As you hold on to that last piece of hardwood, you are infuriated. Uh, that's essentially what Drake did to not only EDM fans, but more so to all of the EDM producers out there. And for his sins, the best I can do is reserve a spot for him on this list. 
When it comes to my overall opinions on the project, I put a decent amount of emphasis on the storyline or narrative. Whether it's through lyrics, artwork, visualizations, anything that really takes the album on a thematic journey. Not all albums are purposely made out to tell a story, and that's okay with me. My issue starts to arise when you tell me there's a story, and then there isn't. I essentially dislike when a record has like two or three tracks that go together to tell whatever narrative it is, and the rest is just nothing. You're telling me there's something there, but I'm not hearing any of it. So what do you think happens when you make your album void of any real storytelling despite telling me there's a story involved, and uh, pair it with some roughly produced tracks? Well, you end up on this list. The album starts with a literal emergency broadcast as its prefix to the record, only to absolutely squander any semblance of storyline for the rest of the runtime. But thematics aside, Slushy has always amazed me in his ability to produce some of my favorite and the least favorite dubstep tracks of all time. I feel like every time I put on a new Slushy song, I'm rolling a die, hoping for a high roll. Yet the die is all ones except for a single six. For all the albums on this list, Ely had the most promise. There were numerous builds and verses from this record that I was really digging, yet it was largely in part to the drops that landed this album here. Carousel featuring Kaiza would have been a poster child for this notion. Kaiza is a phenomenal producer and vocal performer, and having her on this track was going to surely be incredible. I was giddily excited listening to the song for the first time, thinking it was going to be a roll on a six. I was going to get it. It was going to be a six. But alas, when it came to the drop, the die tips over, revealing a one. In the end, though, too many of these tracks were just dead on arrival. Too few interesting ideas all thrown together so haphazardly and slapped onto some tiresome beats. Oh, you thought we were done talking about Slushy? Nope. <laughs> Yep, that's right. Slushy put out two albums this year, both quite poor in my eyes. This album had such a strange release cycle, though. At 15 tracks long, Slushy released a new track in numerical order every week of the summer until the entire thing was released. And you know, maybe if these tracks were outstanding or, you know, even half decent, I would have enjoyed that release schedule. But by the first month, I was already pretty much done with Slushy for the year. There is a rumor floating around that this record was supposed to land on Marshmallow's Joy Time Collective label, and that Marshmallow thought the songs were so bad that he wasn't going to let Slushy release them. Putting the tracks into some sense of purgatory until Slushy could release them elsewhere. Now, I'm not saying that's factual or even real, but I am saying that it makes sense. It would explain why Slushy had two albums so close back to back each other in one year. It would explain why some of these tracks are older whips from years ago. And it would explain why this landed on Dim Mac after years of working with Joytime. Throughout all forms of media, there are those that I would like to call pretenders. Pretenders are most often very popular with commercial mass success. You've seen them on billboards and magazine covers and headlining events. But what separates a pretender from just a popular artist in said form of media? Well, I would say it's those that are actually deeply invested in that space despise them. They are the face of the media but are severely disliked by the crowd that has invested the most time into it. An example of this would probably be Michael Bay for movies, a very popular director with a lot of blockbuster films, but pretty much universally disliked by movie critics. I wonder who that could be for EDM. The Chainsmokers are by far EDM's biggest pretenders, having multiple top charting albums with large commercial appeal and horrible critical reception. Despite an upwards trajectory in their last two albums, So Far So Good is in, in a way, the worst Chainsmokers record yet. It really feels like they've given up trying to make something good and just copy-paste whatever electropop formula does the best on the charts. For the sake of not repeating themselves with their historically shallow lyrics, their lyrical content has become almost nonsensical. This was the first time in the Chainsmokers discography that I felt like they were truly grasping at straws, trying to think of something new to say that they haven't already said. They have now resorted to songs about iPads and going to Italy for the Maradona energy. 
I understand that Maradona played for an Italian club for a couple years, but the man is Argentine and spent most of his international career in Argentina. Why, why are you going to Italy to get his energy? And my gosh, the Chainsmokers haven't been the greatest vocal performers, but boy, this is an all-time low for them. Their production has always been on the weaker side, but that's sort of a point or the point of commercialized EDM. It can't be too complex or else you'll lose those radio plays. So I kind of get the production side, but in the end, it's not that this album is truly bad. It's just the epitome of bland. Once you hit a certain threshold of popularity within the EDM scene, you may start to become more of a vessel for other artists. Your individual releases become more sparse and your once unique style transforms into the industry standard. Over the last couple years, this next artist has truly embraced their calling to be a platform for other artists to use. So much so that their last bunch of albums have been a feature fest of mediocrity. So after all those years of bringing others along for the ride, what happens when you try to do it yourself again? My goodness, this is one of the most wayward, lost, without direction albums I think I have ever heard. There is no cohesion, no tracks that connect to one another, no semblance of quality production. It is truly a crapshoot. I'll give some credit to Steve Aoki here for actually kind of reducing the production features he has on this record, but my goodness, I fully understand now why he utilized so many production features from his last couple projects. Because his own solo stuff kind of sucks now. At 67 minutes long, this also isn't a quick and dirty record. This thing really wants to keep going and for no good reason. I do not want to listen to 25 tracks of the same old EDM tropes that I've been hearing for the past decade. Since 2021, there have been a certain trio that I just cannot stand or even fathom the success that they've had. 2022 saw the release of the third part in a trilogy of albums that should have never seen the recording studio. Everything surrounding these releases have felt like a cruel joke. The album arts have been hideously bad, the tracks are all half-baked and unfinished, but they just keep pumping these suckers out. And you couldn't have at least tried to actually try on the final installment of the trilogy? Go out with a bang? Try to make something worth listening to? No? Okay, whatever, roll the clip. I'm not sure I can accurately describe my dislike towards this group. Something about them just gets into my bones and won't let go. It's like they're constantly trying to imitate the chain smokers. The Chain Smokers, universally disliked by the EDM community and already made it on this list. Stop it. You don't need to be like the Chain Smokers. We already have boring dance pop. We don't need more. If you've been around this channel for some time, you'd know that I severely dislike short songs. And I think the trend of shorter tracks for quicker attention span is going to kill the music industry. And honestly, I think track length can be often an effective indicator for the purpose in which the track was created for. I have found more often than not, shorter correlates to a desire for more streams rather than actual quality. You know how long the longest song on this 14 track album is? Three minutes and 24 seconds. More than half the album doesn't even hit three minutes. This record isn't going to be good. It's to make money. The Chainsmokers did better than this. What are you doing? This project is some of the worst, most egregiously derivative songs of 2022, hands down. There's not a single original idea here that has come out of this album, and I genuinely believe that AI could produce an album with more life in it than this LP. I don't know if it's just my intense disfavor for cheat codes, but I had a low expectation going into this album, and they managed to not even meet those expectations. This whole thing is a clumsy mess. Well, we are finally here, the number one worst EDM album of 2022. Honestly, this was a no-brainer, and while you may have disagreed with me on a few albums up to this point, I'd be hard-pressed to find someone that told me that this album doesn't deserve to have a spot on this list. They were once a household name, produced some of the most iconic tracks in dance pop history, but have since just been relegated to, to just be rancid. My chick, hot chick, fly love with the wings on it. Life to, wife to, so bad put the ring on it. If you haven't heard this album yet, don't. Save yourself an hour of your life because you will never get it back. 
Elevation is without a doubt the lowest point in Black Eyed Peas' career. They had their time in the limelight, but it's time to call it quit, boys. They've proven they can't do much better, and please don't show us you can do worse. Taking most of their notes from dance pop and reggaeton beats, Elevation is a sorry excuse for a record that will leave a sour taste in the mouth of any listener. But while the production may be uninspired garbage, the vocals are miraculously even worse. Here are just a few highlights. Holy f holy f the body of yours is absurd. This is literally the, this, this is the Adam Levine quote. Seriously, f that booty is superb watching your Jiggle, jiggle on the table will permanently scar me. He wants these double, 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 D's. Boom. Might I mention for your sanity that all these quotes are from the same song? There are 14 more just like it. It's clear to me that a majority of this writing comes from Will I Am, as he very clearly needs to be reminded that he's not a hip young producer anymore. You thought Drake's bars about hitting on women were cringe for his ripe age of 36? Will I am is 47. How comfortable are you now listening to an almost 50 year old man telling you, holy f holy f the body of yours is absurd. This album should have never existed and I hate to say it, but the Black Eyed Peas, they have to die. It, it's over, don't do any more. You had your moment in the spotlight, it's time to call it quits. Uh, well, I hope 2023 is going to be better than this because, um, uh, yeah, this, this, this wasn't the best and there'll always be good stuff and bad stuff released every year, but come on, 2023, let's not make this next year's video so easy to make or better yet, prove to me that I don't need to make this video at all. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I, uh, I need, I need another drink.